and welcome to Indian Standard Time, a brand new show on Rajya Sabha TV with me, Jyoti Malhotra, a show that speaks to global leaders and global thinkers, to people who have made their mark on the sands of time. Today, I'm in conversation with Mohammad Umar Daudzai, the Interior Minister of Afghanistan, a former Chief of Staff and a very close aide and confidant of Afghan President Hamid Karzai, and a former Afghan Ambassador to Pakistan and Iran. Mr. Daudzai, welcome to India. Welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. Thank you very much. It's so nice to be here with you. Mr. Daudzai, I would like to uh, start by, by saying that this year, 2014, is a very important year for Afghanistan. You have the presidential elections coming up on the 5th of April, after which US and NATO troops will begin their drawdown from Afghanistan. As the Interior Minister, you're really in the hot seat. Yes. Uh, tell me, are you looking forward to taking back control of your country from the Americans and from the international forces? Well, first of all, let me start with, uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart, extend my appreciation to the international community, including India, for so generously supporting us in the past 13 or, uh, or close to 14 years. It's because of those assistance that we have been looking forward for 2014 to arrive and we take over the destiny of our country in our hand completely. Mm -hmm. we, we have always been a free country, but over the past 35 years, uh, our sovereignty uh, was during different periods uh, questionable. It was in the past 14 years that we started to walk on a new path mm -hmm towards a, a complete normalcy of our country. So today we have uh, everything that a normal state will have. Okay. And this is the day we have been looking forward to and that day is arriving. But when, uh, when you say it's, uh, it, you're going to try and become a normal country after 35 years, yes. does that mean that you will have full control over your own security forces, especially over the army, over the police? Is that correct? Absolutely. Rather, we already have that control. Mm -hmm. There is very little support that at the moment we get from uh, ISAF. Okay. Uh, only the ISAF, which is the International, the international Security, Security Forces, Assist yeah. Assistant Forces. Only uh, air support sometimes we get, air logistics support we get. Okay. Almost all the security operations are now under uh, our control. I mean, the Afghan uh, Ministry of Interior, the Afghan Ministry of Defense, right. and our uh, National Security Department. Mm -hmm. We are already leading. Uh, it's six months that we have been piloting. Mm -hmm. And by the end of this year, that will become almost complete. So when you say that you're leading, are you saying that Afghan security forces, especially when you have uh, operations or encounters against the Taliban, are you saying that Afghan security forces are already in the lead? Absolutely. We so are already in the lead. There's, uh, maybe it's 5% role that ISAF is still playing okay. because, you know, we don't have a full-fledged um, air force mm -hmm. yet. So for some logistical uh, support, uh, shifting from one area to other, or during some very special operations, we do get some air support from international forces. But Otherwise, the Americans are not leading these operations anymore? No. It's, pro it's almost six months now. In the past three and a half months that I've been the Minister of Interior, there is absolutely no operation that Americans or any other member of the ISAF has been leading. We have always been leading, mm -hmm. and we assign their role. If okay. there is any role for them, our commanders assign that role for so them. So then what is the source of tension between Afghanistan and the U.S.? The Americans, you, your bilateral security agreement, the BSA, is still, there has been agreement, but again, uh, President Karza is not very happy with that. What is the reason for this tension? Well, let me start from, from a different angle. Yes. We signed a strategic uh, partnership document with the United States almost a year ago. Yeah. That is a guarantee of our long-term friendship and partnership. Mm -hmm. Now, the BSA, which is an annex to that, okay. this is uh, guaranteeing staying or not staying of U.S. troops in Afghanistan, okay. which doesn't mean continuation of partnership and assistance. Mm -hmm. It's a continuation or otherwise of the U.S. forces staying in Afghanistan. For that, President Karzai wants to make sure 
that they remain within a framework and they abide by that framework. And President Karzai wants to make sure why the United States forces, maybe in small number, much so smaller So how many number, will stay? Uh, that's up to President Obama to decide. But and approximately, what do you think? 10,000. About 10,000? About 10,000. Okay. That's what we hear. Sure. Would be able. Now, those 10,000 obviously would be special forces. And, and, and how many bases forces. will they have in Afghanistan? Nine bases. Okay. Now, out of those nine bases, obviously, they will not be locked there. Sure. They will be coming out. Uh -huh. Now, when they come out, under what circumstances? Uh -huh. Under what rules? So what do you want them to be? You want them to, to play? What kind of role do you want them to play? We've when they stay, we want them to abide by what they sign. Okay. Because in the past uh, 13 years, sometimes there has been violation of what we have been agreeing. Uh -huh. uh, now, we don't want that to continue after signing. Uh -huh. Because in the past 13 years, they have been ruled by United Nations Security Council uh, declaration. After President Karzai signs, they will be staying based on signature of a president of the country. So then we want to abide, we want them to abide by that signature. But you want them to stay. You want these 10,000 troops to stay in nine bases in Afghanistan. You know, there has been a lawyer jerga, which yes. is representative of the Afghan population. And okay. unanimously, they said, we welcome their stay in Afghanistan. Right. And uh, uh, they, they put certain conditions also for their stay which the uh, United States also accept those conditions. There is one point yes. that is not yet agreed, mm -hmm. that which President Karzai wants to, uh, uh, to have a public dialogue, publicly declared dialogue before he signs. I see. Because he is worried that in three months, four months' time, his term will be over, mm -hmm. and then he doesn't know which direction things will go on after that when it comes to dialogue with Taliban. Okay. So, one, so what, is, it, what is this point? That is this about American forces not... Uh, there's been a lot of uh, deaths and killings of innocent people, of civilians. Yes. Is that the main source of tension? That it was. In the past three months, that is reduced to very, very minimum. All because right. we have taken leadership. Right. They have very minimum role there. Okay. And the U.S. forces say that we have already achieved that in practice. Okay. So there is no, no reason to worry that it, it may continue uh, uh, to happen. I mean, civilian casualty may happen in the future because it hasn't happened in the past three to four months. Okay. But the point that's remaining is a publicly declared dialogue with Taliban, which President Karzai expects the United States to start that or to help that to kickstart. And the United States says that we do everything to support it, but it's not in our hands. But there have been, the, I think the Americans did try to start a dialogue in Qatar. Yes. They did bring a set of Taliban leaders, True. but True. Uh, President Karzai was not happy with that. So how do you then come around? What is it? What Taliban leaders do you want to talk to? Uh, well, uh, the, the same Taliban leader, okay. whichever, as long Mula as Omar? It, as long as it's a delegation that represents Mullah mm -hmm. we accept that. Okay. Not himself a delegation that is declared to be representing Mullah Omar, which Qatar Mullah Omar did say that these are people who are representing us. But our point is to the United States that if you can take them to Qatar, if you can keep them there, why can't you arrange a face-to-face -face dialogue with us? You've been talking with them for years, while you promised that there would be one encounter with Taliban and then the next one would be with Afghan government. That still didn't happen. Mr. That's I hold your thought. I want to ask you about Mullah Omar, but we'll take a very quick break. Sure, sure. We're going to take a very quick break. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching Indian Standard Time on Rajya Sabha TV, and I'm in conversation with the Interior Minister of Afghanistan, Mr. Mohammad Umar Dadzai. Mr. Dadzai, before the break, you were, we were talking about the fact that the Afghan government, President Karzai, yourselves, that you would like to speak to Mullah Omar or the team that has been designated by him. Okay. Now, where is Mullah Omar? We don't know. He's at least not on Afghan side. So where if is he, he was there, we would have found him and we have gone to talk to him because we have our own Afghan way to, to find somebody and to talk. There is Afghan customs there, there is Afghan tradition. It's obviously he's leading uh, Quetta Shura and Quetta is uh, on the other side of the Duran line. It's in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So do you think he's in Quetta? That I don't know, but he is leading uh, the Shura of Taliban that's called the Quetta Shura. But in all these years, in these past 13 years, mm -hmm. since uh, Afghanistan was rid of the Taliban, mm -hmm. 
Are you saying to me that there have been no feelers sent to Mullah Omar who is in Quetta? After all, you're from the Daudzai tribe. Mr. Karzai is also from a very well-known tribe um, uh, of uh, the Pashtuns. Yes. Now, is your government, have you not sent any direct feelers to Mullah Omar? Personally, to Mullah Omar, no. Because okay. Why we not? have never sensed where exactly he is. Okay. But below Mullah Omar, there has been indirect Afghan way of contacting each other. But nobody, no feelers to the Quetta Shura? Uh, others below him are members of the Quetta Shura. Some of them have been in contact with some Afghans that are associated with the Afghan government. But these are Afghan contacts. These are traditional contacts. These are tribal contacts, which under any circumstances it, it would exist even if we are in the middle of the war, there would be some, some kind of contact going on. That did exist. Personally, with Mullah Omar, no, because, uh, because we never sensed where exactly he is. So do you think Mullah Omar is the key to stability in Afghanistan? Symbolically, yes. Why? Because he is leading the uh, movement of uh, the Taliban. He, he is their leader, uh, never been replaced, never been... Uh, since that somebody else is there, so he is the sole leader and uh, symbolically he is important. But because he is not on our side, there are other strangers attached to him. Who are these people? Are they the Al-Qaeda? The Al-Qaeda, yes, of course. It's but they have but infiltrated the Taliban movement to a, to a great degree, would you say? Uh, 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 this goes to 90s, in 1990s when the Taliban movement emerged. Initially, Al-Qaeda was separate. Uh, but then Al-Qaeda joined the movement and uh, supported the movement technically and uh, financially. At this stage, we all expected that Taliban would publicly declare their disassociation from Al-Qaeda and they have failed to do that so far. And why not? Do you think that they are being held back by some exterior forces? Uh, the fact that they are in Quetta, they what does that mean? Of course, the fact that they are in Quetta, that means they are being hosted maybe not by state actors, maybe by non-state uh, state actors in Pakistan, but they're being hosted in Pakistan. But how can they live in Quetta, in, in a big city of Pakistan, without the Pakistani government or the establishment knowing that they are there? We, we, I wish we knew the answer to that. But do you ask that question? Of course. We, when I was ambassador in, in Pakistan, that's the conversation we always had. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, the facts are that um, Pakistan has admitted that they don't have control over Taliban, but they say they have influence over Taliban. Mm -hmm. Now, they cannot have influence on Taliban that are based in Afghanistan or that exist in Afghanistan. Obviously, there are Taliban leadership that exists in Pakistan, and therefore Pakistan says that they have influence over Taliban. And so, not control because maybe they don't listen to them 100%. But influence, they have admitted. The previous government admitted. Prime Minister Gilani was the first to say that we have influence. And, uh, and the present government also. Prime uh, Minister Nawaz Sharif? Uh, Nawaz Sharif himself I haven't heard, but the uh, uh, foreign uh, minister, uh, advisor on security, Sarta Jizis, yes. he is on record to say many times that, uh, that, they, that they don't have control, but they have influence over the Taliban. So what does that mean to you? If the Pakistanis have influence over the Taliban, mm -hmm. does that mean to you that, that they are not exercising the influence? Do you want them to exercise the influence? What does that mean? We are still trying to, to encourage Pakistan through different means to exercise that influence to bring Taliban to negotiate. But are, you, are you upset that the Pakistanis in for 13 years have not given Mullah Umar back to you? We have a complaint from Pakistan that, uh, that they could do it. Uh, through three consecutive governments at least, uh, Musharraf uh, and then PPP government and now the PMLN government, each of them have promised that they will do whatever is at their means. Mm -hmm. But they have not delivered. Of course, in some cases, they have delivered on some other conditions. Like, for instance, we requested them to release Taliban prisoners that were in Pakistani jails. Like Mullah Brother. Like Mullah. They did release, although Mullah, Mullah Brother himself is not completely released. Yes. But others are, are completely released. So they delivered on one of their promises. Okay. The second request from us was to bring them to negotiating table. 
they they still haven't brought them uh, but they have always said that yes they have influence over taliban and they will use that influence to bring them to negotiating table so far unfortunately they have not delivered and only a few months are left for this to happen in the sense until the your presidential elections are going to take place in the first week of april yes we always hope that before the end of the current government yes. uh, the pakistan will bring taliban to negotiating table but if they fail to do so, but at least if there is a firm commitment from them, that would still be a, a good thing to know. Because uh, even if they bring them to negotiating table, that doesn't mean we will have peace or a peace settlement before the end of term. We just wanted a good beginning. I, uh, the reason I'm asking you this, Mr. Daudza, is because, as you know, the Pakistanis have been saying for some time that one of the reasons that they're holding the card of influence over the Taliban, mm -hmm. whether in Quetta, whether in Miramsha or anywhere else, anywhere else um, or, or Karachi, or. or Karachi, is because they do not that after the American troops and the NATO troops withdraw mm -hmm. and Afghanistan returns to becoming a fully sovereign and independent country, mm -hmm. they do not want to have India play such an important role in Afghanistan. Do you agree with that? Um, I will put it in a different way. Okay. If anybody thinks that uh, when the foreign troops leave Afghanistan and Afghanistan will be as vulnerable as, as it was 10 years, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan has a, its... Uh, it's very strong security forces, well trained, and their morale is very high. I was surprised when be I became Minister of Interior and I learned so much strength is accumulated there and so much commitment and resilience is there. So by now, I'm fully confident. But the Pakistanis, do they understand that? The, uh, I, I hope they understood. I wish they understand that. And if anybody do not understand, they're making a mistake. After the foreign troops leaves, we don't need anybody's military presence or, or rather direct military assistance in order to help us keep our country. We are fully able to look after our country and to defend our country. Of course, we need economic assistance, sure. we need training, uh, we need uh, exchange of experience uh, with our friendly countries like India. We will continue that. But to, ha to say India would replace the United States militarily, that's wrong. We don't need that. Please hold your thought, Mr. Daudzai. We're going to take a very quick break. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. I'm in conversation with the Afghan Interior Minister, Mr. Muhammad Umar Daudzai. Mr. Daudzai, before the break, we were talking about the Pakistani establishments or the government's influence over uh, the, th the Taliban or the Quetta Shura. Now, uh, as you know, there is this term called the strategic depth, which several people in Pakistan, especially in the military establishment, they keep talking about it from time to time. Mm. And what that really means is that they would like to use Afghanistan as a, as a space or as a proxy space from which to, to launch other activities, perhaps against India. Mm. There were many versions of that that I'm witnessed in the past 20, 25 years. Okay. Um, first, it was Mirza Aslam Beg, the, yes. the ex-chief of army staff. Who, who first used this term. First used this term. And then others say that, well, the Pakistan wants to keep Afghanistan as their backyard. Mm -hmm. Or many other versions. I personally think that that's insulting Afghanistan. Afghanistan is no longer a country without owners, a country, a country without leaders in a country without security forces. We, 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 we cannot be anybody's backyard. We are a free and independent country and we will remain so. Now, I also happen to, to hear or to, to conduct such a friendly conversation uh, when I was ambassador in Pakistan. Yes. And they always say that it was uh, uh, an old uh, kind of uh, statement. We no longer subscribe to that. We consider Afghanistan as our, our neighbor. Okay. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't so uh, take that seriously now okay. because they have always rejected. So that is a very big change from the past. And you're very glad about this change. I, I, and I hope in practice also it's proven. Okay. In statements it's okay, but in practice also I hope it's proven that that's really the case. So can I uh, uh, bring you to the uh, strategic partnership agreement with India? Right. What does that mean for Afghanistan? This, this agreement is now about nearly two years old. 
You know, India and Afghanistan throughout the history, at least for the past 60 years or 66 years that yes. uh, India has been a uh, free and independent country, our relationship never had downs. It has always been up. It has always been steady. We have always been two friendly, close uh, 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 nations that have helped each other, particularly India has helped us more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I think that's how it will remain. Mm -hmm. Now, the strategic uh, uh, document partnership, or yeah. partnership document Agreement. is basically to bring all the assistance that India will provide, or I hope there is a day that Afghanistan also can provide sure. assistance to India, yes. to bring that into a framework. Mm -hmm. So that there is no uh, uh, no need to each time negotiate. So there this is, is, there is a bottom line. Okay. Yes. So this is economic assistance, and is it also military assistance and strategic uh, help? Is that also I would that? say it's, it's security assistance okay. more okay. to to learn so wh from each other. What does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, training training of our officers of our experts. Um, uh, and if we if we need uh, weapons to buy in international markets, uh, if India has, and if we have money, we will buy it from India, mm -hmm. and 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 that would uh, have an associated training to to go along with that. When it comes to security, that's what we mean. I mean, I'm looking forward to the Indian Home uh, Ministry that at some point I meet with them and I ask them for some scholarship for Afghan police, particularly in IT section, because you are very good okay. and we need uh, uh, good IT experts because uh, we are also more uh, uh, gradually and increasingly relying on, on on uh, technology sure. and for that we need training so this is the kind of thing that that will happen but beside there is a cultural cooperation there is a, um, right uh, so it's it's across the board this, it's this across the board. Uh, there is no limit to it okay but the security assistance that you've been talking about and president karza has also talked about this now there seems to be some hesitation on india's part about um, undertaking this security training in Afghanistan. Mm. Is that your understanding too? Not, not so clearly, but the fact it's coming slow, maybe there is hesitation. Uh, Do you think India should hesitate? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because, again, from my experience, I have heard Pakistanis telling me that you are an independent country, you, you, you have the freedom to have any kind of cooperation with any country in the world. But when it comes to more direct Indian military presence in Afghanistan, which will never happen. You mean boots on Indian soldiers Indian in Afghanistan? Indian boots in Afghanistan to replace American boots. That's what Pakistani said. We will, uh, will not be happily accepted by, by Pakistan. Okay. But otherwise, any other kind of cooperation, they have, uh, I've, never, I've never heard him on record. Because the Indians, seem, but the Indians seem concerned that if they provide training and other security assistance, including the supply of weapons in Afghanistan, then the Pakistanis will get Maybe much more Maybe over-provoked. Yes. It's, it's, it's Indian view, but I would not subscribe to that. I think they should not hesitate on that. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> and President Karza, I'm sure, has made this point to Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. Uh, I, I wasn't there, but I, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, he may have made that okay. point. Yeah. So, you, do, you think the Indians are being a little bit... Overcautious. Overcautious? Overcautious. I think they should come forward. We are two uh, free and independent nations, and we have every right to cooperate with each other. Uh, and, and we have every right to cooperate similarly with Pakistan and Pakistan with Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka with India. We are all members of SARC. There is, there is no limitation on us. Why should there be? In the, uh, in the wake of the drawdown of the security forces, there is a hope that the road from Kabul via Peshawar, Lahore to New Delhi and perhaps even to Bangladesh will be a much more open road. Do you think? Do you think there will be a day when Indians can can travel to Kabul and you know perhaps eat breakfast in Delhi, yes. lunch in Lahore, and dinner in Kabul? Do you think that's possible? It's our dream, but I hope it happens in our lifetime. I wouldn't say road; I would say a motorway. Okay. So that goods go uh, wider roads, uh, you drive faster. That's 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 our dream, and it should happen. Why why shouldn't it happen? But why is it that the Afghan-Pakistan trade and transit agreement is not being extended to India? That's uh, the the problem is in Pakistan. Okay. Um, although on uh, export of Afghan goods to India, 
they are a bit flexible um, on a case by case basis they have said they would allow and sometimes they do allow our fruits and other uh, goods. But then when it comes from India to Afghanistan or I mean import, then they say well we, have a, we are producing equivalent in Pakistan, why don't you buy our goods that you go and buy it in so India. So they are still nervous about they're still nervous. In an Indian presence in Afghanistan. I would say that uh, uh, with the coming up of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, there is improvement in that thinking. Okay. Because uh, what I know, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif believes in economic revival of Pakistan. And he wants that to happen quickly. Mm -hmm. And he knows for that he needs to improve his uh, relationship with India and Afghanistan in order to have access to Central Asian markets. And he may be trying to separate security files from trade files. Uh, and I know he, he, he has been trying. He still doesn't have much clear success, but I know uh, his government is trying his best and, and we have to attach hope to that. Absolutely. And I think India is hoping very much that there will be much greater economic trade and partnership with Afghanistan, with Pakistan, with all these countries in the yes, South region. Absolutely. It will benefit all of us. And, uh, I think it will benefit Pakistan more than the two of us because they are in between. Mr. Dadzai, thank you so much for talking to Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome. It's been a Please pleasure welcome. having thank you, you here. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. That's all we have for today. I've been in conversation with the Afghan Interior Minister, Mr. Muhammad Umar Dadzai. We'll have another episode of Indian Standard Time next week, same time. Thank you so much for watching.